Hi and welcome. My name is Kelly and this is Kelly Bell Stitches where I talk about my cross stitch and some of the other crafty things I've been working on. Um, it's been a couple of weeks I think since I did my last floss tube video. Let me see. I have my journal back here. Um, and I've done a little bit of stitching, not a whole lot. Yeah, my last uh, floss tube video was on June 27th. And since then, really, the only thing I've stitched on has been uh, my Mirabilia, Mirabilia, which I can't say, um, Michael, the Archangel Michael. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and I'll show you him in, in a minute. I did want to say that I did hear from Jay at Mortuary Stitches. And she got the cloth witch that I made for her and sent. And I'm really happy and really kind of surprised. Because it only took, I don't even think it took two weeks to get there. Which is amazing to me since I sent... Uh, envelope-sized package to uh, Elaine in Australia and that package as far as I know has never gotten there I, I mean go figure I mean granted Australia is the other side of the world but you wouldn't think and this was months ago now anyway um, I'm just glad that Jay got Hetty okay, and, and she likes her, so that's good. She comes full of healing, um, prayers, and well wishes for good health, um, and hopefully brings a smile, because I think smiles are healthy and healing, too. Um, and on that note, I also wanted to say that I, um, had read on Stitch Mania, Beverly Ettinger's husband, Ken, had posted that Beverly had passed away. And I'm not going to get too emotional, I hope, um, because at the time that I was making Hattie for um, Jay, I was uh, making something for Beverly. And I think about the time that I saw that she passed away was the day, was it? I had asked her and Jay for addresses the same day and I hadn't heard from Bev. And I think I had m mailed Hetty the day before. I read this on Stitch Mania, I think. And, uh, and it broke my heart because the last thing she said to me was that she was scared. And I had told her that I was praying for her and that lots of people were praying for her. And um, I told her that I was making her something. And I'd like to share that with you. Um, I made her some Greek worry beads, which when my granddaughter asked me what Greek worry beads were, I told her they were the original fidget spinner because they don't really have a religious connotation. They're just something that people use. They pass them through their hands. And I guess the textural stuff kind of gives you some relaxation and relief. So what I did was I made some polymer clay beads and I strung them on some really tough thin cord and I added some crystals for some different textures and um, I put the shield bead on because that's the shield bead that keeps these beads passing smoothly back and forth and to that I added my um, peacock tassel and I do have a video on my other channel about how I made this uh, but I thought that Beverly would, would like this and that it would, um, keep her company. 
Hopefully I should recover, but as that turned out, that wasn't to be. But I know um, she's not suffering anymore, and she's not scared. So I just hope that she rests in peace. Um, I know that she'll see her family and friends again someday. And um, yeah. So <sighs> that being said, <laughs> we will all miss Beverly. She made some of the nicest comments on everyone's videos. And I know she always watched my videos and she always left me very supportive comments. So God bless Beverly. And let's see, moving right along, I will show you, oh, I did have a question on my YouTube channel. Um, and it was just a day ago and I can't find the comment. I got an email about it. I got the notification on YouTube that there was a comment. But I'll be darned if I can find that comment. It's not there. So it's possible that it, maybe the person figured it out and then deleted the comment. I don't know. But I couldn't find it. So it's um, Shabby, Ms. Shabby and Unique USA. She left me a question on my floss tube number 15 about what about my counting pins and that in that video I was showing counting pins I'd made for Halloween so this was back in October and I'd made some jack-o'-lanterns and a Frankenstein monster head and some wizard hats and some little ghosts <laughs> I couldn't find the comment and I can't find those counting pins so I either gave them all away or I put them away somewhere so I don't know which but to answer the question I do have these little gnome counting pins that I made and I showed in another video and let me see if I have something I can show um, I use jeans and weenies the way you use a counting pin is kind of hard I use it when I'm figuring out where center is. I will fold my fabric. This is jeans and weenies. I'll fold my fabric in half. And then again in quarters. And then I take the pin, and I don't do it exactly like this, but it's hard to show. And I'll mark that center stitch. Generally, I open it back up, find the center crease, and then I mark it with the pen so I know where to start. Also, when I'm moving, like when I'm not doing full coverage pieces and I need to go to a different motif or whatever and I need to count over X number of squares or holes in order to do my next stitch, I use, sometimes I'll use a counting pen because I use those little petite needles and sometimes these counting pins, especially when I'm counting, and counting and recounting it's easier to use the extra pin because then you count over so many spaces and you hook your pin into the into that square and um, then you can recount again if you need to but that just verifies that you're going to be putting your stitches in the right place and these are just the little gnomes that I made around Christmas time but the comment was on my October video about the Halloween ones. And um, I hope that helps. I just use them to count spaces, to count stitches, to find center, to mark center. Sometimes I use them to mark the three inches in and three inches from the side if I want that size of a border around my piece. If I'm, especially if I'm starting up in a corner so I know I'm not starting too far out. I do stitch sometimes in hand. So, um, yeah, sometimes the pins just come in handy. And um, so I hope that answers the question. Um, but is anybody else having that issue where people are, might leave a comment and then you can't find the comment? And it doesn't come up as being reviewed because I always try to clear up my possible spam stuff. 
So I'm not sure where it was. And it wasn't in like the personal messages because it didn't link me there. It linked me right to the video. So yeah, I don't know. But I hope that answers the question. That was shabby and unique USA. Um, yeah, so anyway, I've been working on Michael and this is what he looks like. And this is for my son, Michael. Oops, glare, sorry. And I like him. The only problem I have with this is this like curly Q thing in the sleeve. To me, I don't know. And I don't know how to change it, so I guess I'll just leave it like that. But I'm not really liking the way this the arm there looks. Maybe it's because there's no cuff to delineate between the sleeve and the front area. But it kind of just kind of looks twisted to me a little bit. But anyway, enough of that. Um, let me take the pattern off of here. This, the last time I showed this, um, I just had this. Let me see. If, um, don't really have anything to put behind it. It's kind of gloomy here today. Let me stand up. The last time I showed this, I just had this little bit here done. And the last few days that I've stitched, I've been working on filling more of this in. And I actually worked on this yesterday for full coverage on the 5th because he actually is a full coverage piece. Um, he's a circular design, but he's full coverage. No motifs. But I'm having fun working on him. He's been calling to me, so I will continue working on him on and off. However, <laughs> um, Barbara Anna's across, this is part five, Across the Seas. I don't have the picture. This has been calling me to me also, and that's all I've got done here. So I'll be picking this up and working on it a little bit. I put it back on a frame so that it would be ready when I was ready. Although I think I've done most of that in hand too, but I think the uh, fabric, oh, this is a 32 count wild orchid, Muglana. And I really love that fabric, which is good because I bought the same fabric to do three Mirabilias, Michael, Lady Alexandra, and Ella, the frog princess. So, that is, I like that fabric. And the other one that's calling to me that I will probably work on, actually one of the other ones, is for my patriotic piece for this month. I'm going to try to finish Jeans and Weenies. I haven't gotten any further on this because I've been working on some other things. Let me see if I can just put it, I'll just fold them in half because... I haven't gone up above the halfway mark yet. So that's what that looks like right now. And I love it because it reminds me of my Dachshund Jack Russell Terrier mix, Wally, who's a good boy. And uh, he's laying around here somewhere. So I'm going to work on that. And I have Halloweenies. And I also have Spring Rolls. These are all Plum Street samplers. And I also have Wiener Wonderland. You can see my light, sorry. Wiener Wonderland. So, I have my work cut out for me with these patterns. They're fun. They're, they're really easy stitches. I'm enjoying it a lot. So, I'll be working on that. Notice I'm not telling you when because... I am an eclectic stitch person. I kind of stitch when I feel like it, when my eyes feel like it, a whole bunch of other things. And the other thing that I want to work on, and this I should have done by now, so I really feel kind of bad about this one, is I want to try to finish my Elephant Viscornu. Yes. It is still hanging around. 
I've had the front done for I don't know how long. But I'm still working on the back. Put it down and... Oh well. I think this is... Um... Oh my goodness. It's an even weave, and it's one you can buy in a package at Hobby Lobby. So, my brain failed me. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> those are my stitching plans for the next week or so. And uh, I kind of gotten back into a polymer clay um, craze. Prior to polymer clay, I was doing some beading because I found a pattern for a spiral bracelet. So I decided to work on bracelets. So I made this. This is all glass and it's, it's a strung bracelet and it has a magnetic clasp. So I like that. That was bracelet number one. And then this that kind of matches what I'm wearing. Can you tell these are my colors? Um, this is bracelet number two. I made this and it has some rectangular beads in it. So it has a little bit of a different shape. And it has round beads and a rectangle. And it has a clasp. It's got the lobster clasp and a like a diamond closure. And then I made uh, a, like a white and hot pink and clear spiral bracelet. Again, it's, it's strung and it has a magnetic clasp. So those were fun. Um, that kept me out of trouble for a day. The same day, I also decided to take some of my blue beads and string this necklace so it's just knotted. And it's a bunch of different kinds of beads. And it ends in bead cones. I added some chain and then a toggle clasp. And again, it's blue. I could wear it with this outfit. <laughs> so, yeah, jack of all trades. And then I got into polymer clay. So I made some beads yesterday. And let me see if I... I can help you get this envelope, I guess. Let's see, you get them to lay right. I haven't done center cabochons for them. I don't know if I'm going to or if I'm just going to leave them silver. But that's what they look like. And there's, you know, the little wire wrapped. Eye and uh, polymer clay beads, bead caps, uh, cabochon um, piece, and then they're just um, regular ear hooks. Yeah, so I had fun making these. I have a video on my other channel where I was making some of these cone beads too that are like a smaller version. The ones I put on Beverly's, I'm still considering them Beverly's worry beads because I made them for Beverly. I didn't glaze those beads. Um, so they're flat. They're just a regular polymer clay color. Um, these four earrings are, are glazed. So they have a kind of a gloss coating. It wears really well. 
And then also polymer clay. These are not finished. I haven't glazed these at all. And I haven't put backs on them. But I did this because I was playing around with swelligant patinas and some rub and buff. And I'm going to string this with this wax cotton cording. And this is an extra bead from like the ones I put in the earrings. So I'm going to knot that. And I haven't quite figured out what I want to do for the rest of it yet. Can you tell? I like I make everything pretty much myself. And then I also made, and this was all because I had gotten samples of this Swelligant stuff that Christy Friesen endorses, and I wanted to try it out. Uh, I wound up using Rub and Buff, but this is a pendant with a bird on it, and it will go on a cord. And like I said, it's not glazed yet. And there's a few little flat back crystals on it. Um, so that is my foray into polymer clay in the last two weeks. Actually, the polymer clay foray was just this week. Um, I was still working on the earrings and things this morning. And then I also did a little bit of my paper stuff. So I went ahead and I did the, this is for my Wizard of Oz album. Maybe that's a pocket. And I have the two tags that I have finished. And this one has the picture already in it of the guard, my rock wall garden out by my back deck. And that's what I intend to use this album for, because um, there's no place like home, which I think is what it says right there. There's no place like home. And the wizard will fix everything is also what it says. And then that's the spine, in case you haven't seen it. And that's the back, the Emerald City. I did finish the inside front cover and the first page. Stand up. Um, I'm doing this like a rainbow, so this first page layout is red. And you can see the witch's feet here. And this is a, a belly band where I could do a bigger page with pictures on it and slide it in here. And it goes all the way through and then the shoe is actually not glued down all the way so it's like a stopper the page would go inside the shoe and it wouldn't fall through the inside of the cover i did a waterfall page and this is magnetic and it just opens down and then i could put a picture up here and i could put picture a picture here and then this just all this is hard to show, but there's different pages, and there's a few pages here that I could also put pictures on. So, my next layout page will be orange. Not necessarily all sparkly. But I showed this the last time, I think, that I cut this out of the local paper when our balloon festival was going on. And this is the start of what I'm going to do, because this will be a, a, a tip, a tip in or a tip up, whatever. And I just have to do the back of it, and I'm going to put some orange behind the balloon, but you can see that... I have the basket area done in gold. So this will be orange and then it will be yellow 
and then it will be green, and then it will be blue and indigo, and then the last, the inside of the back cover and the last page will be violet. So it'll be a rainbow. And uh, so I've been keeping myself kind of busy. I, I've been having fun. I've been playing with some of the stamps I have. Uh, I've been kind of distracted in that way, I guess. Uh, I have lots of stuff and I've just decided I want to use it. And I have lots of things that I really enjoy doing. Um, I did have one piece, because I'm trying not to buy anything either, because I really don't need anything. But from Color and Cotton, I bought the Carriage House on Main Street from Carriage House Samplings. And this is the car like the Carriage House. And I just thought that was pretty. And since my house was a stagecoach stop on the Great Northern Turnpike, and it was the original part of the house was built in the 1770s, and it was a place they changed horses on the stagecoach, that that would be kind of pretty. I'll frame it and hang it right in my entryway. The only thing I don't particularly care about, um, I was looking at this once I got it, and if you see there's a horse here, but it kind of looks like a demon horse. I know that's probably supposed to be reins or bridles or something because he's he's attached to the carriage, I think. But that just looks a little freaky. So I might leave those top two black lines off. Those two there. I don't know what... I don't like it. But I like the rest of it. The rest of it's beautiful. So... That is on my horizon also. I see that everybody's doing, uh, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are doing whip parades, which I Good almost do. stopped. Sorry, I'm back. Um, I know I was almost done. Uh, I have more than enough whips. I could do a parade, if, but I don't know. I feel like I don't get enough stitching done anyway and to kind of get it all out and look at it all I don't know that might might freeze me up so I don't know I'll think about it if you'd like to see what I have in the line of whips they're not the usual things I guess some of them are I still haven't gotten back to Dragons of Sumatra it still isn't right and I'm actually considering going to uh tea stained fabric. Oh, that's the other thing I did. Um, I get the five skeins of floss from Color and Cotton from Andrea, and I, I love the flosses. And I also joined, she's starting up a hand dyed fabric club. And I've always said that I would never buy fabric in a club because I like to dye my own. But I thought this would be kind of a good opportunity to try some different fabrics that, you know, I may not have in my stash or colors that I may not be able to come up with. So I thought that would be fun. And so I joined that. And I did get a message, an email that my next floss um, subscription has shipped. I haven't heard about the fabric yet, so, but I will show it when I get it. I do want to show this. Um, this is a box. It's a cigar box that I altered myself. There's a video about it on my other channel. And I decided that I've been seeing everybody do their floss in, you know, floss away bags. These aren't floss away bags. They're just bags that I bought I don't know, online somewhere. And i am got the 3x5 card in it. And I have, I'm putting my color and cotton collection in like this. And right now it's alphabetical order inside the box. And I think I've gotten, I don't know, 
three subscriptions, so I think I have 15 skeins of floss so far. But I'm really liking that because the way I usually keep my floss is on bobbins. And I have the main body, you know, wrapped around the bobbin, and then I put the extra floss through the hole. And if there's extra that I, you know, enough that I want to save it, then I'll add that in the hole also. And I like the idea that, you know, you cut off the length that you want, and this, the main part of it stays on this side of the card, and then the cut part and any extra can go on this, inside the same bag. And you don't have it all kinked up on the bobbin, and I really like that. I like that idea. So, I don't know whose idea it was to start with, but I've seen it a few times, and uh, I really like it. And I can't really show you the inside of this box, but it's got roses on it and a mirror. Um, I had a good time making that box. I have a good time making just about anything. Um, yeah, so I didn't do a lot of shopping. Like I said, I got this one chart. But I am enjoying shopping my stash. And yeah. I have an awesome stash. It's very, it's very sad to say, I suppose. I have, I have crafted for so many years and I have stockpiled so much stuff that I can shop in just about any shop you could imagine, all within my house. So I guess that's good. Put my box back down over there. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed my video. Uh, it's a lovely community. I send prayers for healing to anyone watching who needs um, support, a hug, some better health. Uh, until next time, take care and God bless and be colorful. Bye.